Hey, yesterday, guys, we started talking about this uh, idea of what we call compound inequalities. And we said compound inequalities were going to be inequalities that mean which two words? What were they yesterday, Jacob? And or or. Excellent. We gave this statement right here. Today, I could be penis or I could be candy corn. All right. I could eat penis or I could eat candy corn. That means I can only have how many of the two choices? One. Okay. I might also say today I could have candy corn and penis. I may have had a penis. That would be pretty, pretty, pretty fun. All right. But they like some rock and roll. Candy corn and penis are life at this time of year. All right. Right. You passing on that, Noah? Yeah. You're missing out on good things, bud. Uh, have you ever had them before? You don't like them? Huh? Candy corn or peanut? No. Oh. You ever had a salted nut roll before, bud? Good stuff. All right. Um, the difference between these two statements, one hand or, I say I want candy corn and peanuts. What's that implying? So I mean, just one, I get what? I mean, just one, I get Oh, satisfying two conditions at once. So that was the big idea yesterday. We said, you know what? And you want to write this down. By the way, does everybody have notes today? Everybody have them? All right. We had said yesterday, yeah, right here, any inequality using the phrase and. Or, or. Okay, so I think we got that down yesterday, didn't we? You guys agree with that? All right. Hey, and then quickly, down here at the bottom, we had an example right here. As we're talking about the speed limit in Iowa, we said, hey, how do we represent an inequality on a number line for an interval that's going to have a minimum value and a maximum value? In this example yesterday, what was our minimum speed limit? 40. I think I put that right about. Ooh, I'm way off there. I think I put it right about here, didn't I? Somewhere in there. And then I think I put 70 over in here somewhere. In which case, we labeled these. We said, hey, my minimum was 40, and my maximum was 70. Didn't we say something to the effect then that to represent the speeds that would be law abiding speeds? We said shade in the middle, didn't we? Isn't that what we said? What did the inequality look like yesterday when we did this? Say one more time, Anna. Less than or equal to R, where R represented a law abiding speed. Less than or equal to what? 70. Okay. So he said anytime you have an interval yesterday, you're always going to put which value here on the clip on the far left here. Which value goes on the far left? The minimum. You're going to have some form of a less than sign. Your variable goes in the middle. Another form of a less than sign. And then your maximum on the right. Okay, and I think we got that down yesterday, right? Okay, so we were on the second page here. And on the second page right here, I think we said examples of an interval. Didn't I give you a general form for this right here in that box? Okay. It uses and, right? This uses and. So this is going to be an example of what looks like an interval here. And I think I told you the way you set these up, you always put your minimum value on the left. You have a less than or maybe a less than or equal to sign here next. You have your variable in the middle. You have a less than sign or a less than or equal to sign. And then you put your maximum over here. Now, guys, keep in mind, this only works for intervals, a point where you start and stop and shade on the outside of those points or in between those points. In between those points, okay? So, did we write anything down on the graphs yesterday? Did this class get to this point yesterday? The first one. Okay, can you uh, remind me of my values that we put down? Negative 10? Okay, negative 3 and 10, okay? That sounds like a Vikings record. Negative three wins and ten losses. <laughs> but I, 
like my Vikings. Hopefully they're gonna hopefully they can win this weekend. Okay, so did we shade in between these guys? I think we did, didn't we? So our job here is to write an inequality that's in that uh, interval right here. And then I want to talk about what type of interval this really is, right? So you got it, Keegan? Oh, negative three was open? Okay. Did we write anything there? Let's let's trade this. I want to do this. Go ahead and shade negative three in like I have up there. So in your notes, make that adjustment. Shade negative three in there, okay? I need to get the same point of three again. Okay, let's do this. Guys, what is my minimum value on this interval right here? What is that minimum value? Negative three. Okay. The way I've asked you to change this today, would that be a less than sign or a less than or equal to sign? Less than or equal to. Okay, my x values, which would be less than or equal to what? Well, 10. There's the inequality for that interval. Now guys, they're going to start talking about types of intervals that you have. The first thing I'm going to tell you is this. On the endpoints of what I have up here, are they open or are they closed? So what kind of interval do you think they're going to choose to call this? Well, they're going to call it a closed interval. It's called a closed interval. Reason being, my endpoints are included. They're closed. Makes sense, doesn't it? All right, let's try a couple other values here. Uh, somebody give me a value, not two, no, give me a small value, six. All right, I'm going to go open on six. We'll maybe say it's right there. Somebody give me a value larger than six. 23. I'm going to close 23. Guys, I'm going to calibrate this one more time. I'm off a little bit this morning. Well, I'm off every day. You guys do that, right? Thanks, Mason. Okay, uh, and again, I'm going to shade in the middle because that's what an interval is. You shade in the middle of points. That's what an interval is. All right, so um, based on our general form of what an inter interval should look like in inequality form, anybody want to take a shot at this and what it would look like here? Jacob, you're the man. Roll, buddy. Six is less than or x, less than or equal to... I'm going to agree with this, uh, first of all, uh, values, minimum, maximum, in the right spot. Are the signs a less than form? Uh, why is the less than on the left not less than or equal to? The sign needs to be that way because this is open. Anybody have a guess on what they call this kind of an interval? called a half open interval because one dot is open. Okay. Half open interval. All right, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw two more examples up here. You guys write down the inequality for me. You guys write down the inequality for me. Let's go this way. Let's go closed here. Let's go open on the right. Uh, I'm gonna pick some of my favorite numbers. And I'll show you right in here. All right, so I want you to write an interval. Uh, I'm sorry, I want you to write an inequality that represents that interval. And then likewise here. We'll do ages that drastically change my life, all right? I'll do ages on this that drastically change my life, all for good stuff. Um, ages that change my style of life drastically. How do I want to do this? Yeah, this will be good. All right, so you guys write an inequality that represents those intervals quickly. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about what's, what's going on here. Mrs. Uh, Olson. Uh, Oh, 
you bring it back, I'm going to eat it. How about a volunteer? Someone I haven't heard from yet this morning. Help me with this one. Go ahead, and I'll get you on the next one, Pam. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yep, Anna. Less than or equal to? Excellent. Good job. Give yourself a pat in the back. By the way, what kind of interval would this be as well? Half closed, could be half closed, but we're going to keep that one also as, we'll keep it as half open. We'll be optimistic about it, okay? This is also half open. All right, how about volunteer for my last uh, interval there? How about an inequality that represents that last interval? Emily, you want this one? Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, 30 And just to remind you what this implies, this implies we're talking about all values x greater than what? <laughs> all values of x greater than 30. And all values of x less than what? 40. Hey, both dots are open on this one. What do you think this is going to be called? This is an open interval. Open interval. I have fish in my tank. One of my fish is named closed interval. One of my other fish is named half open interval. And the other one's named open interval. I think closed interval is blind. Yes. But I do have a fish named Ferocious. Do you like that? Jeffrey Dahmer says he ate them all. I like that. Oh boy. I don't know. Cannibal. Cannibal. All right. Okay. You understand intervals. I think you've got a great handle on them. Are you okay with what's going on here? They just represent some kind of a range. You start somewhere, you end somewhere. Now, the other part of uh, uh, inequalities that we need to look at deal with inequalities that don't use the conjunction and, but rather the conjunction or. And I want to show you what's going on here. Okay, so I want to talk about this one right here. If you ever talk about an infinite interval, uh, this is going to use the conjunction or, okay, and I'll show you what's going on here. Guys, how many points did we have to talk about in our intervals? We had two of them, right? And in which case, in reference to those two points, you always shaded where in relationship to your two points? Did you shade between them or to the outside of them? Between them. Well, anytime you were in between them, you were satisfying that condition and. Now, anytime you use the condition or, you're going to have to write two inequalities. All right? You're going to have to write two inequalities. And here's your form for this. And I'll show you why this is the form. Here's what's going to end up happening. You might have something like x is less than negative 5 or x is greater than 6. Really, the form is x is less than the minimum. This value right here will always be a minimum. This will be a maximum. So I'm saying you have x values less than a minimum or x values greater than a maximum. So let me just show you what's happening here. I'm going to put an example up here. This is an example of an infinite interval. And specifically, not just one, but two of them. How about a value on the left? Somebody run one by me. Seven. seven. How about a number bigger than seven? Thirteen. Thirteen. You're pretty adamant about thirteen there, Emily. Always my favorite. Is it? Yeah. Are you are you uh, big on Friday the thirteenth? Yeah, I love my birthday. I'll have to show you something off of my Facebook page. I think you'll get a kick out of it. How many are familiar with all the Friday the 13th movies? Anybody watch that stuff? How about the Halloween movies? Stuff like that. I've got one I've got to show you. 
Okay. Um, I've got to look it up. This is old. You guys remind me. I think somebody said we got to take out of it. Guys, in relationship to my minimum and maximum points, did I shade in between them or to the outsides of them? Let me ask a question. Are there starting points for these intervals? No. Are there end points? No. no. Okay. This is the case right here. Rather than shading on the inside, you're going to go to the outsides of them. All right? And this is just simply going to be put like we've done in the past. Instead of writing one inequality, you have to write two. So in this first one right here, we have to say we have x values less than what here? Seven. Now I can't write the other way because we're not in between here. And then the only thing I do then is say that or x has to be greater than what? Thirteen. Did I write that second one correctly? Is there a little problem there? What's the problem, Keegan? I need the equal sign. Okay. All right, so anytime you have stuff that runs to the outsides of this, you just have to write them as two separate inequalities and then use the conjunction or. I have a question, guys. Is 9 a solution to that inequality? Would 9 be a solution to that inequality? Where would 9 land in relationship to 7 and 13 on the number line? Between them, right? Did we shade anything between 7 and 13? So anything not shaded would indicate something that's not a solution. So my question again, is 9 a solution to that uh, um, compound inequality? It's not. Anything in the shaded region would be. How about 7? Is 7 a solution? Ooh, careful on this. 7 cannot be a solution because what kind of a dot is on 7? It is what? Open. Okay. It's open. So let's take a look at some of this stuff right here then. On the third page, they want you to start uh, writing and graphing compound inequalities. Okay. In example one, they say a number C is less than 5. What conjunction do we... Uh, circle there, and or or, and greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, quick question. Am I going to write this in interval format, or am I going to write this as two infinite intervals? Interval format. And what forces us to write this in an interval format? The word and does. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is put our minimum on the left. What is the minimum? <laughs> What's the minimum here? Um, negative 2. So we've got greater than or equal to negative 2, which really implies we're comparing x values to that. We want x values greater than or equal to negative 2. Even though I said to put less than signs in there for that whole format, when I look at the x and I look at the negative 2, could I read that as a number x? Oops, I've got the wrong variable in here. What should I be using? C. Ah. Does that also say that number C is greater than or equal to negative 2, like the statement suggests? It does, doesn't it? And then finally they say, hey, this is also less than what? You guys like the way I've written my interval in inequality form? Okay with that? And to graph it, I don't care where you pick. Uh, negative 2, open or closed on negative 2. And then 5, open or closed on that? Wouldn't you be open on that? Where am I shading since we uh, have an interval? Inside, between, between the minimum and the maximum. Very good. There it is. There it is. Second one right here. A number t is less than negative 1 or greater than or equal to 4. Is this going to be an interval format or are we going to have to write two infinite intervals? What's the conjunction here? 
the or, then we're going to have to write prove them. So we're going to say the number t is less than negative 1. So we're going to write that t less than negative 1 or less than my minimum. Or, let's put the word or there, or t is greater than or equal to 4. Since this uses a conjunction or, find your endpoints. In this case, they're really start points, but just label your minimum and maximum somewhere. I'll say negative 1 is here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll say maybe 4 is right here. Have I left dots open and closed appropriately? So we're okay there, right? This is an or situation. So am I to the insides of the values or to the outsides? Outside. So any value that would work for being in those shaded regions. How do you guys feel about this? Do you understand the difference between the two? Nothing new, we're just taking two inequalities and putting them together at the same time. Sometimes you shade between the points, sometimes you shade to the outside of the center, right? Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Okay, ready to move on? All right, let's rock and roll this. Guys, solving a compound inequality. Do not make this more difficult than it absolutely has to be. Every time I've said solve an equation or solve an inequality, your goal has always, 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 and always will be B, 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 to isolate a what? Isolate your variables, right? I want my variables alone. Well, look at this case right here. Is X all alone in the middle here, guys? No. Plus one there. You guys conveniently would tell me to do what? Isolate the variable. So to undo that addition of 1 so as to isolate that, how are you going to do that? The difference here is this. Instead of dealing just with two sides now, technically you're dealing with really how many sides? There's three parts. So how many parts are you going to have to subtract 1 now from? All three of them, aren't you? Negative 1 in the middle, minus 1 on the left, minus 1 on the right. Everybody see that? Okay, so on the far left, what is negative 3 minus my 1? What is that? Negative 4. Bring your less than sign down. What's a plus 1 and minus 1 going to do in the middle? Plus 1, minus 1 will cancel, right? Leaving you with what variable in the middle? X. Hey, is that good or bad, having just a letter in the middle? That good, right? That good. What are you going to have on the left side? I'm sorry, the right side. Four. There it is. There it is. It's solved. It's solved because you've isolated what variable? No, X. Guys, when I plot my minimum and maximum values, which you're both going to get open dots on, are you shading middle or shading out? Shout it out at me. Middle. Okay. Now, what's the next one? Oh boy. Then they start throwing curveballs at you. Okay. Process is the same. I still need to get what alone and solve it. I still need to get the x alone, right? All right, so looking at the middle part right here, what's the first step we're going to have to apply to everything? Add four to all sides. Who? All right. This math stuff and I, we don't necessarily get along very well. I don't think I'm very good at it, but how about negative 7 plus 4? Negative 3. So I'm going to write this as, I'm going to kind of make it down here so I have room to work. I have negative 3 on the far left. How about the middle part of this interval? What's that going to be? What kind of 3x, Mason? Yep. How about the right side? What do you have on the right side? 6? Okay. This is where the trick kind of comes into play here. What are you going to end up dividing by now, guys? What do you think, Jacob? You can divide everything by a negative 3. Now, we have to be very careful because we've been told that any time you multiply or divide by a negative in your process of solving any inequality, what will happen to the direction of your sign? Okay, let's just do what we're told first. What happens here? Well, 
This is going to be what value? One. Less than shall become what now? How about on the right side? I'm sorry, the middle part. X. How about over here? How about over here? Isn't that going to be greater than or equal to now? Negative what? Careful, not three. Six divided by negative three would be negative two. Okay, here's the problem, Jane. Here is the problem. Are my signs pointing at a less than or a greater than direction? That's bad. Okay. Is one my minimum or is one actually the maximum here? Okay, so what we really want to do is take this whole thing after stuff switches like that and rewrite it. We're going to call this negative 2 on the left because that's really my minimum, right? This sign, I'm just going to change the order on stuff. If the signs get screwed up, change the order back to the way it should be. Move your minimum to the front. Move your maximum to the back. Now, guys, if I switch the x and the negative 2 around like I did here, what would happen to the direction of this right here? So less than or equal to should go right here. The x compared to 1 right here. If I switch the x and the 1 around like I have over here, what's going to happen to this sign? Well, it's going to switch. Okay. Graphically, then, my minimum, negative 2, open or closed on that. Say maybe one's right here, open or closed on one. That'll be open, wouldn't it? Let's see, this looks like interval format to me, so my shading in between the dots or to the outsides. Okay. Can we handle this? Can we handle this? Probably. Definitely. All right. All right, let's turn to the last page here quickly, then, and get this thing taken care of. Guys, we just got done looking at how do I solve um, inequalities that represent intervals. So up here in example three, we're going to look at solving infinite inequalities. Basically, you're just solving two inequalities at one time. If this is an infinite inequality, would I be shading between points or to the outside of points? Perfect. Let's do that quickly on this one. Subtract 6. So you have 2x less than negative 8. So when I divide by 2, x less than negative 4. All agree? Yeah. Next one here. What do I have to add to both sides? I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So this one here, I'll add 5. Let me kind of separate them here a little bit. To both sides. On the left side, you're going to get 4x. On the right side, you're going to get 8. So when I divide by 4, would you guys agree x greater than 2? Everybody agree there? Okay. So how do you graph x is less than negative 4? Well, pick negative 4 here. Should I go left or right of negative 4 again? Left. And really what's tipping me off is this. Saying, hey, it's an or, so you're not going in the middle. Go to the outsides of it. And you also have x is greater than 2. Maybe 2 is right here. Where are my x values greater than 2? Left or right at this point? Doesn't that represent two infinite inequalities there? Okay. All right, so guys, I guess the last thing that I'll look to do here is this. Uh, You guys have that one. Okay. Last one right here is solving a real life problem. They use this a lot. This is a recommended storage temperature for ooh, fittingly chocolate. Ew. 15 degrees Celsius to what? 20 degrees Celsius. It says write a compound inequality that represents the possible storage temperature not in Celsius, but rather in what? Fahrenheit. Using the idea that Celsius is equal to what? 509 times. Okay. All right. 
Here's how you would handle something like this. Do you guys agree that they're saying that temperatures here should be between 15 and 20, of which 15 and 20 would be included? You guys agree? All right, so this would be an interval. We're between those two temperatures, aren't we? All right, so I'm going to write this as 15 less than or equal to C, which is less than or equal to 20. Okay? That would be the interval if we were comparing temperatures and relating it to the unit degrees Celsius. However, they want you to relate this to degrees how much? Fahrenheit. Okay? Guys, right here, they give us a formula for Celsius. They say a formula for Celsius as it relates or as a function of Fahrenheit degrees, C could be replaced with the right side of this mess, which is 5 ninths times what? What does that represent? Fahrenheit minus how many degrees? So the way I've set this up as an interval compared to my Celsius degrees, this part, couldn't I re can replace the C with that mess right there? Because that's what Celsius is equal to in Fahrenheit form, right? All agree? So here's how I'm going to write this. You guys help me out. What are we going to replace the C with? Five ninths the quantity of F minus 32. Do that. Put your minimum in. Still less than or equal to. Five over nine times F minus 32. Less than or equal to 20. All right. Now this one here is a little bit trickier because the F minus 32 is in parentheses in the grouping order there, all right? What would be really cool is to compare the interval as it's just degrees Fahrenheit. So what variable are you really solving for in the middle? F, okay? Now, normally I would say add 32 and then multiply by the reciprocal, but since there's parentheses in there, we need to get rid of that uh, fraction first. So I need to multiply everything by the reciprocal of 5 ninths, which is... 9 fifths. So let's do that quickly. I need to multiply everything by 9 fifths. So let me get a color change here. This times 9 over 5. And then also this here times 9 over 5. Okay, help me out here in the middle first. What are the reciprocals going to do to each other? So what are we left with in the middle? Okay, quick arithmetic. I always like to multiply fractions by dividing by the number on the bottom first. So I really go 15 divided by what on the bottom here first? What is 15 divided by 5? 3. 3 times the numerator of 9 would be what? 27. Everybody agree? Over here on the right, same thing. I'm going to do 20 divided by what here? 5, which is 4 times the 9 up top. 36, right? 36. Hey, we're getting closer again. What are we trying to isolate? We're trying to write an interval of degrees Fahrenheit. So which variable are we trying to isolate here? Yeah. So what am I going to have to do to all three parts? Add 32. So in America, since we're used to a Fahrenheit scale, I say, hey, I want to store some chocolate. What's the ideal temperature to do that in? Well, what do you get on the left when you add those up? 59 degrees, less than or equal to your F. So you want my temperature in Fahrenheit to be greater than or equal to 59. Or in other words, the lowest temperature is what? So what? 59 to 68 degrees. I don't know if you're like me in the summertime and you leave a Hershey bar laying around or in the front seat of a car and then you go out to the front seat of the car and pick that up. You have a capital gross mess, right? I mean, you left chocolate in the car before. I am still eating the chocolate. Come on, we're all guilty. I know it. We're all guilty. So in America, what would be ideal temperatures for storing chocolate? 59 to what? 68. How many of you guys put your Snickers in the freezer? That's not ideal, guys. That's not, you're not supposed to do that for you. All right, first of all, questions about the notes. Yeah. 